I'll tell you, I'm, I'm excited about this, Tim. Cool. Yeah, me too. It's uh, it's gonna be a good topic today. Wired mics. Um, Indeed. The uh, the stepchild of the microphone industry. <laughs> that's, that's the analogy. Oh, that's a perfect way of putting it. Uh, okay. And on that note, I think that uh, might not be the perfect segue, but it will be a segue into us kicking kicking off today's webinar. So uh, it is one oh two. Disregard the clock in the back here. Totally wrong. Um, but welcome everybody to today's webinar. Myself, Tyler Cox, and uh, our field systems engineer, Timothy Mackey, joining me. And we are here to talk about why not wired mics. It uh, seemed like a fun uh, subject when we put it together. Uh, most people knowing, uh, you know, Yamaha purchasing Revo Labs and their, their wireless microphones, but uh, the technology within these wired microphones is something that really needs to be spoken about. Um, and since I am not a engineer and more so only know a lot of buzzwords about this type of stuff, I think it's about time, Tim, right, that we talk about the advantages um, and get rid of the stigma and, and those disadvantages that folks might think come with these types of solutions. Uh, quick housekeeping items. If you have any questions, pop them in the Q&A. We will answer them uh, either as they go, if they are relevant, or wait till the end. Um, and I think that's the quickest housekeeping I've ever done. So I'm going to let uh, Mr. Mackey take it from here. Thank you, everybody, for joining. We are really, really excited about this one. Uh, Tim, go ahead and take on over, my friend. Thank you very much. And everybody can see my screen OK? Yes, sir. Awesome. So why not wired mics? Well, it, it's a funny topic, actually, because people always ask me, well, I've been doing this many years, and often I get asked, Tim, what's the best audio we can do in this room? And that question's always been very, very simple for me. Well, give everybody who's a participant in the room their own microphone and put it as close as you can to their mouth. Um, the inverse square law dictates that that really is the best audio you can do. Uh, when you think about it, when you see somebody speaking at a lectern, they're not speaking into a ceiling mic or a boundary mic or an omni mic. They're actually speaking into a directionalized microphone. Directional audio is the best pickup for conferencing. You know, when I think of an omni mic, I always think that it's uh, a unique requirement. Maybe it's a round table or a bit of a compromise. So yeah, directional microphones, and we'll touch on the microphone styles and different types of microphones a little bit. But for me, that's where the best audio is. Yeah, there are ceiling mics today and other technologies which are trying to overcome the inverse square law, but really it is the best audio you can get is putting the microphone as close as you can to the speaker and have that be directionalized audio. Here we're looking at uh, the new Adesia Dante TT mics, which are part of the Adesia solution, but are also standalone uh, uh, mics that can be used with anybody's DSP. And those are really what we're gonna focus on that aspect of those mics today. And we're also going to take a look at these. This is the YVC-1000 with its uh, mic pucks as well. And there's uh, actually three directional elements in these. And we'll go over the two different microphones and what's, uh, what, what's different about them. They are slightly different animals, but then again, used for the same thing. So no conversation about this uh, topic is, is, is done without at least talking about the inverse square law first. And that's simply that every time you double the distance between an audio source, like say a microphone, and your listening source, say your mouth or a speaker to your ear, you drop six decibels. So if I take a microphone that's two foot from my mouth and I move it to four foot away at arm's length, I've now dropped six dB. That's a massive difference. We're not gonna go ferreting down into what's decibels, what constitutes the 10 power of decibels and how the scale works. But know that there's, there's no way around that physical uh, uh, law that every time you double the distance from your mouth to your microphone, you're gonna drop six dB. You know, you move it from one foot to two foot, you've dropped six dB. You move it again to four foot, you're now 12 dB down from that original location. So for me, microphones that you put on the table right where you need them really do generate the best audio. So we're gonna focus on two of our, our tabletop microphones today. First of all is the RMTT mic. This is our state-of-the-art latest mic for the Odessia solution. And as you can see here, it's a full member of the Odessia uh, solution in that it's auto-discovered, auto-detected by our processor. 
But we're going to focus on this aspect of it today as a standalone Dante wired mic. On a, and in that regard, it's pretty unique. It's not just a microphone. There's actually four 90 degree elements in this microphone and they're combining to do some pretty unique stuff. The DSP is also on board on our mics, just like our ceiling microphone. The DSP is built into the microphone itself on the RMTT mics. Um, it's not on the YVC 1000, we'll talk about that. But on these mics, yeah, that's a fully d processed DSP built-in mic. And it remembers its last programming state. It's a very simple, intuitive GUI to set it up. So what are the technologies that are under the hood of our processors and our microphones? Here's the suite of, of, of uh, technologies that we have in, in, this, in the Odessia microphones. Obviously, adaptive AEC, echo cancellation is the backbone of, of conference rooms. You can't have a conference room without having a good echo canceller. That's the whole premise of conference gear, is dealing with the echoes that come in a hands-free environment. Automatic gain control. We're constantly adjusting to keep the output constant to the far end, irrespective of how quiet somebody might speak on the close end or how loud they might speak. And automatic room EQing. That's part of uh, something that's unique to the Odessia solution and the YVC 1000, not the mics themselves in standalone mode. But the auto tracking of the beams, uh, that's, that's pertinent, as well as the de-reverberation. And we're going to take a look at a chart and see exactly what we do with that. Not a lot of our competitors put de-reverberation technology in their UC products. And this becomes really paramount when you're dealing with today's glass conference rooms, which have no consideration for the old ANSI standards of room acoustics, right? Really, uh, oh yeah, we want to be transparent in our environment, but we also want to sound good. So we need some technology to overcome these, what I really call fishbowl rooms. And then steady state noise reduction. You know, we're looking to cancel out fans, projectors, uh, any sort of noise like that. Now, what's unique to Yamaha is human voice activity detection. We can differentiate between speech and background patterns. You know, Yamaha's bread and butter is music. I know we make motorcycles and many other things, but when you look at our logo, it's three tuning forks. Audio is our wheelhouse. We have 130 years of audio processing know-how under our belt. HVAD helps with a lot of things, like the auto tracking and location of our beams. Also, with steady state noise reduction, we can filter better from 20 to 20. We don't have to tiptoe through the human speech range for fear of filtering it out. So, What's the really cool technology and how does it work in these table mics? Well, I'm kind of lazy by nature. My table mic, I just slapped it on my table and left it in auto voice tracking mode. I let Yamaha do the heavy lifting, do all the processing, but you can configure them for specific use cases as well and we'll take a look at that. So out of the box, by default, if I put four of these mics on the table in auto tracking mode, if I sit at this chair and start to speak, they will list, deploy this strategy to try to listen to me. They're going to put a cardioid pattern on me this direction, and the adjacent microphones will listen in that direction to try and pick me up. But I can set these mics up to be whatever I want them to be. Suppose I do want a classic omni pickup pattern, a half sphere pickup pattern. With one click of the mouse in the GUI, the four elements combine to give you that pattern. We also have what's really cool, a toroid pattern as well. So we can now have that same 360 pickup pattern, but not listen right above. Maybe you've got a projector or a noisy fan above the table, right? Really good for those applications. And then, of course, back to my favorite. The best audio you can get is directionalized audio. You know, you want to focus on the, where the speaker, the person talking is, and not the adjacent background noise and the reflections of the room and other people that may be rustling. You know, fo focused audio is, is the best way to go in conferencing. Now we can narrow that, I have a wide cardioid pattern. We have cardioid, supercardioid, and hypercardioid all available in the drop-down menu. Now we also have this cool bi-directional mode. Now back in the day, many applications, we used to almost butt two directional mics back to back down a long wide table like this. And that's nice to see that that mode is included within the GUI. And I, we've gone through the GUI on previous webinars of this. I'm not going to actually show you the setup, but I've got a couple screenshots here to show you some of the setup. For example, if I mount this table at the end of, uh, mount this microphone at the end of a table, and I want to cover all three sides, I can set channel one up to look that way, and there's a slider where you can adjust it. You can move it to any degree you want. Set up channel two to look this way, and again, to save screen space here, I would set up channel three to look this way. So now I have directional pickup to cover three ends of a table. In education, we're using all four channels and doing more of a fanned 
half 360 pattern. This gives the instructor directional audio when they have their back to the room and a master mute button, because there's mute buttons on here as well for that room. Very simple and intuitive to use. Again, these are designed to be used standalone with anybody's DSP. In fact, here's the cool part. Suppose I've got a third party DSP and I've got eight echo, echo canceled AEC inputs, but I've already got eight microphones in use on them. If I have a spare line input, we are the DSP. We're doing all the processing at the mic level. Now you can expand that DSP's capability by giving us an echo reference through Dante, and we'll give you a fully processed input into a simple line input. So that's a quick look at just the flexibility of the TT microphone. And we're actually seeing folks stock these microphones because it's not like back in the day where well, I don't want to have a half a dozen Omni mics sitting on my shelf. This is an everything mic. It, it, it fits so many applications. So now let's take a look at the other table mics we're really focusing on today. And that's the ones that come with the YVC 1000 system. And they're a little bit different. This is not a Dante mic. This is a proprietary mic to this system. But what's unique about it is there's three 90 degree elements. And it's the same thing. We're doing actual auto gating between those elements. Whichever one is closest to the person talking, that's the one that's going to uh, gate open. In fact, if you have multiple of these, and we'll talk about that, out of the box, if you have multiple of these on a table, you can see which one you are close to because the LEDs will brighten. It will literally track you as you walk down the room. Now, it comes with one mic out of the box with a 5-meter Cat5 cable. Now, the quick caveat on the Dante mics, those are a single uh, on the previous mics I showed you. There's only one RJ45 in there. They don't daisy chain. They're a home run back to a PoE switch. But these do have two RJ45s, and you can add up to four more of these mic pucks for a total of five of these. And what's unique is this is actually a full DSP and processor. Each one of the individual mics in these pucks is treated as an individual mic. So when you have five pucks, you really have 15 elements, 15 individual channels of DSP and microphone in there. And there's a quick closer look at it. And again, the LED will brighten as, as you are, uh, to indicate which mic is actually tracking you. And again, a mute button right there, very cool indication for red and white. Now let's talk about the system a little bit as we also talk about the mics, because this only works with this YVC 1000 system. The system itself is really one of our unsung heroes. It's an award-winning system. It is Zoom certified. It's just about complete with team certification. And it does a whole lot more than you would think for a little uh, tabletop conferencing solution. It has USB, Bluetooth, and line in and out. So there's three interfaces that can be bridged in here. And by the way, the Bluetooth also facilitates near field connection. But here's the real meat and potatoes. The speaker is in this unit, and this unit's designed to go at the front of the room. But you can also have your own speakers. And just like our Odessia solution, this system will auto-tune for the room. It is phenomenal for reconfiguration in training spaces or on the go as a mobile unit as well. You can also plug it into a codec, do record in and out, and we can even do two wireless presenter mics onto the input here. Very scalable, flexible solution. But its real power is how it scales from six people to 40 participants very easily. Here's an example of these different arrangements you might want to do with this solution. Every time you change it, by the way, you're simply going to press the tuning fork button. It's going to play pink noise and auto-tune for that location of the mics in that room, in that environment. I could literally set this room up in 10 minutes for a world-class conference in this space and cover this many folks. Again, fully Zoom certified, and these are the kinds of rooms that it's actually in. There's the unit at the head of the room, but again, you can augment it with your own speakers. Here's another look. Here it is daisy-chained, two mics in this environment. I actually, and I'm going to talk about this at the end, I just outfitted some of my brother's conference rooms here in Austin. He moved into a new building with his company and asked me to come in, and we actually did the YVC 1000, and I'll go over why here in a little bit. There's another look of uh, a great application for these. A quick setup, again, on a, on a mobile arrangement. And again, you can use an additional microphone into that input, in addition, as well as the five microphone pucks. Now, we have some really cool case study stories with these as well. One of them was C-Vent, and we'll talk about that a little bit at the end. This is C-Vent in 
Washington, D.C., and they standardized on the YVC 1000 system here in the room. And they had some real challenges with these glass rooms. And we'll go over why they selected the 1000. But just like the Odessia microphones, the 1000 system has those same technologies and processes under the hood. So what's unique about, again, here I added this one in for you there, uh, Tyler. When you are actually sitting at the table speaking, it will select which microphone is closest to you and auto gate that. It's using that human voice activity detection to locate you. Now let's take a look at what's actually happening under the hood with these systems. So this is where our human voice activity detection comes into play and our gain control. Because we can differentiate between speech and background noises, we can do a better job of processing that gain control. Here is that tuning fork button. You simply push it, a voice comes on, tells you to be quiet for two minutes, and then it tells you it's a success at the end. But what does it do? This is actually the de-reverberation I was telling you about. There's three things going on here. Number one is the scan of that room that the YVC did by playing the pink noise, and that's the blue line. It then applies this filter, number two. And number three, the red line is the new scan of the acoustics of that room with the filter applied. And this yellow area is the reverberant noise, the echo and reverberation in that room that we have eliminated. How does the HVAD help our noise reduction? Well, a typical microphone without noise reduction, maybe our, uh, a standard mic, would be about a 20 dB signal to noise ratio. There's your background noise, there's your signal, there's your ratio between the two. Our competitors, when they put on their noise cancellation, they do a pretty good job. But with HVAC, we do an even better job at eliminating those noises. This is actually the reason I selected this for my brother's system, and I'll, I'll talk about that. Not to get too techy, but de-reverberation, again, uh, we all talk about RT60 in this time, and RT in this industry, and RT60 is very, actually a very simple concept. If I clap my hands really loud, RT60 is saying, hey, how long does it take for that echo, the reverberation of that clap, to decay 60 decibels? And in, our, in conference rooms, you're looking for about, you know, a second, second and a half max for RT60 time. Now, I've been in rooms, I was in a podcast chamber once, and it was filled with egg crate foam, and it was so quiet, it was uncomfortable in there. You know, Microsoft just lost the uh, uh, um, world's quietest room up there in Seattle to somebody else recently. But we're all used to a, a, an amount of background sound. But you get too much, and it really affects your conference. So what's this chart? This is not quite an RT60 chart. This is an RT55, but this is what's happening. There's your noise, your clap, it, or maybe white noise, or somebody speaking. The second it stops, you have an immediate decay of about 20 dB. But then you look at the resonance of that room, the blue chart, and that's what you get. Now let's take a look at about a half a second. It's only diminished about 32, 33 decibels. But with the YVC 1000, it's now approaching 47, 48, approaching 50 dB. This is a huge difference, and it's actively what the system's doing in the background. So that's a look at our wired mics. and. Let's take a look at why some people have selected these systems. One of our uh, success stories is Summit Public Schools. Um, they had some real issues, even after they upgraded their, their infrastructure, thinking that bandwidth was going to be the issue. And they solved it all with the YVC 1000. It fits so many of their rooms and many of their applications. And it really was a real-world ROI impact for those folks. Again, let's talk about Cvent. This one I was actually got to go to this customer and all of their rooms like this were glass walled and they had some real issues but this one uh, uh jj kim the gentleman i met on site there was really impressed me with how he went about analyzing and selecting this product they brought in to this particular room and this is just adjacent to their lobby this is one of their main main conference rooms they brought in i think it was 20 initial products they narrowed it down to about five the yep. yv thousand being one of them and then they made blind recordings from different seats in this room and uh, with uh, the same scenario for every product they sent those five recordings a b c d and e to all the e staff and to a person every single executive selected the yvc 1000 as the best audio and that's actually the reason i selected it for my brother's conference rooms recently i went out there with a yvc 1000 to look at his rooms and he told me they've got these air registers that really are horrible. It was, uh, I think it was almost 60 dB of background noise in that room. I plugged in the YVC, set one of the microphone pucks on the table. 
booted it up, did the pink noise process for two minutes quietly in that room. It analyzed all of that noise. And then I made a Bluetooth pairing with my phone literally in seconds. And then I called my brother from that conference room and I said, can you hear the noise now? And I just used the Bluetooth as a line in and out and I was speaking over the YVC 1000. And it was astonishing, that noise was completely gone. So yeah, people always ask me, what's the best design for a room? Well, a decent wired mic on the table is a good start, but an intelligent directional wired mic on the table, you know, we're gone beyond the days of analog boundary mics. Everything's going digital. These microphones, whether it's the true ethernet microphone I showed you with the TT, or one that just uses Cat5 for connectivity in the 1000, everything's going to be going digital and going to be using data cables. So with that, um, let's throw it out to any questions. Tyler, anybody, any hands raised? Well, there was a question about analog. You just answered it. Um, uh, there is a question here that wants a little bit more information on the talker tracking on the YVC 1000. So how, how that might be, how you might be able to explain that a little bit more. Yeah, um, I think there's a video I did about 18 months ago during the initial lockdown of the 1000 here in my shop space where I had three or four of the microphones on the table. And the concept is, as you move down the table, you can see the LED ring brighten up on the microphone that's tracking me. As I walked past to the next one, you could literally f watch the microphones track me down the table. And the way they're doing that is they're using HVAD and auto gating, just standard auto gating between the three 120 degree mics that are in the pucks. So whichever of those 15 microphones in that room I'm closest to, that's the one that's focused on me. And it makes a big difference. You don't get the typical up and down variation in your voice when you walk down a table of standard microphones. So if that kind of answers that question. Yeah, I, I believe that does. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and you spoke about here. Okay, this question. Any tips for conference rooms that shift layouts frequently? Yes. Yeah, so one of the things that's really advantageous about the YVC 1000 is you can move the microphones. And while you're having your cup of coffee, hit that tuning button, leave the room and come back. And it's now completely auto-tuned for that new configuration. So for mobile, the YVC 1000 works very well in addition. Now to the TT microphones we showed you at the beginning, those are pretty cool because you can move them from room to room and have them do different things in different rooms. Or you can move them within the room. You may have one setup where you'll have that microphone at the head of the table and it'll have a three directional zone pickup. Or you may one day have it on the center of a round table. That is a good application to have a round omni mic pickup. So it's the flexibility of use and the ease to change those modes on the TT mic that really went out. But with the YVC 1000, you know, there's really two kinds of solutions in this space, tabletop and installed solutions. And for me, the 1000 really blurs those lines. It can act as both. It can be a mobile, put it on the table solution. And then as you can see with Cvent, it behaves and acts. It uses a separate amp and speakers in the room because it can do that as well as its own speaker. It can interface with wireless mics if you want to add those in for presentation. And it has that sophisticated use of its own 15 microphone elements. So hopefully yeah. that answers that question. And I think the deployment of them putting that uh, YVC 1000 throughout 120 rooms definitely justifies the technology working well enough for them. <laughs> Yeah, you know, in this day and age where we're looking at all these new technologies, um, don't forget that inverse square law. You know, it comes back to what's the best audio you can do in this room? Well, it's a microphone one foot from your mouth on the table right in front of you. That's always been the case. Any other technology we have out there is really trying to overcome that reality. So, yeah, we're seeing a, a, a big resurgence in the TT mics. Uh, they're being used, like, like I said, in education spaces. We'll have our ceiling mics in that space covering the, uh, the students, participants, whatever. And then we'll augment with tabletop mics in, in key locations as well. And I think that technology working together <clears throat> based on where the speaker is throughout the room is, is just out of this world. So in some of those pictures, uh, a question came up here. In some of the pictures, um, obviously, they did a great job of 
<clears throat> setting those up, but they look wireless. Where are the wires or, or how did they go about getting those wires underneath the table, under the floor? You know, what was so that you you were part of the C Vent one? Um, Excellent question. Excellent yeah, question. So that came in. So the tabletop Odessia microphone has a provision for the wire to come out the side and sit on the table or a provision for it to come straight out the bottom. You drill a hole in the table and it has a mounting plate so you can rigid mount it. In gotcha. fact, when you're when you're setting up those zones, you do want the mic mounted. But again, that's the beauty of that mic. If you don't want to mount it, just leave it in auto tracking mode. Now, the YVC 1000 microphone pucks, um, there's two RJ45s. And you can buy 90 degree fittings or 90 degree cables. And that's basically what they did. They Velcroed those mics down and used a 90 degree fitting to tuck the wires. And it almost looks like a, a wired, uh, a free floating wireless microphone there. All right, let me so, yeah. reiterate that, the RJ45. Yeah, there's there are 90 degree RJ45 cables available and rigid 90 degree RJ45 plastic housings that will get you, instead of the wire coming out the side, it can come right out of that RJ45 and tuck vertically downward with the YVC1000 mics. And keep in mind, with both mics, the hole only needs to be drilled large enough for the cable itself. You can re-terminate your own RJ45s if you want to. Right. So yeah, that's a, 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 a quick refresh and a good look at our state-of-the-art wired microphones. And again, every microphone in the future, we're going to not see the old boundary analog mics anymore. Everything's going to be an Ethernet-powered mic is my prediction for uh, where this industry goes. <clears throat> I might have to agree with you on that one. Um, I think that is it on the questions. And in reality, I... That is the perfect overview of, of, you know, the type of technology, like you said, we've been in audio for over 130 years. Uh, that really places us, you know, in, in my eyes, you know, above the, the competition out there when it comes to technology within these types of audio solutions. Oh, we got one more here. Do you have a preferred PoE switch? Oh, that's an easy question. Yamaha. Yeah. No. Um, so the beautiful part about our Odessia solution is we call it PoE Plus, and our bundles include our Yamaha PoE Plus switch. But that's for the processor and our line array speakers in that solution. All of our Odessia Dante microphones only need standard PoE, 15 watts. Yes, uh, we like to sell our Yamaha switches, but Dante is ubiquitous. It's a done layer two protocol. There's no programming of the switches for Dante. Cisco, Dell, Foundry, Juniper, Extreme Networks, most of your enterprise class switches are fine. Your customers may mandate that it goes onto their networks and that's just fine. So that said, I wouldn't go to Home Depot, get a $20 switch and try to run my AV network with it. Mike, I hope that answers the question, not to be biased on our part, but there's all your options. Um, uh, one more here. How do you change the directionality of mics? Phone app menu buttons on puck USB connection to app on computer. So with uh, with the Don with our Dante tabletop our Odessia TT mics, if it's part of an Odessia solution, it you log into the regular GUI through the processor and you can affect all the changes on the mic. If you're using it with your own DSP, you simply log into the mic via IP and there's the entire GUI for that microphone in a web page, an onboard web browser for you. Perfect. And again, that microphone is a DSP as well. Very, very cool. Right. That technology all within that simple mic pod is, is uh, very impressive. And that's what so, you're listening to me on today, by the way. I'm talking yes. to you on an Odessia tabletop microphone. And you sound lovely, Tim. Thank you. Uh, right. But that is the 30 minutes. I think we have answered all questions. Guys, thank you very much for joining us. Um, if you have any other questions, reach out our way. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate the, the question. Hopefully we answered well enough for you. And guys, uh, remember, check out everything at uc.yamaha.com. Follow us on all social networks, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you name it. Uh, we have a fun December coming up. I will finish off with letting you guys know that we will be having something brand new, uh, some giveaways, some discounts, uh, some Ask Me Anythings, some webinars all coming up uh, each day 
through the month of December. So we are excited for the next four and a half weeks to, to, to kick off the end of this year and kick off 2022 with this hybrid reality. Thank you for joining. This will be uh, up on our YouTube page. Tim, thank you very much for your time. And everyone, happy, make it a great rest of the day. Happy holidays, everybody. And happy holidays.